The Dice Tower is proud to present the modern table gamer, Peter Kraus. Hey gamer friends, Pete Kraus here with Modern Table Gamer, and today we're going to look at the rules and gameplay of a game called Desktopia. But uh, it's not really what my game says, but trust me. Uh, this is a Russian game published by Hobby World, designed by Timofey Bokarev and Konstantin Seleznev, uh, released in Russia and soon to be a Kickstarter game in the US. And it is a dexterity game and different. <music> of Desktopia goes something like this. While you're away, the warriors of the Order of Fire, Grass, Metal, and Dust come alive and battle it out on your tabletops, desktops, and floors in the form of discs. So we get to take control of these discs, make teams out of them, and duke it out by carefully aiming your flick. So your team's goal depends on if you're playing a constructed mode or like a campaign mode. In a two-player constructed mode, which is really fun, that's what my son and I have been playing, victory is awarded to the last team standing. And then also there's a book, let me grab it here. It's our script book, which I'll find the first page. All right. So we have this Desktopia script book that's got a whole bunch of different scenarios that you can play that's a lot of fun. They have a lot of three and four player uh, scenarios in the script book that make a really balanced game and that's kind of fun as well. So my son Luke and I have tried a few scripts out of here. We've tried campaign modes and find that those are cool. They have different um, different goals that you have to meet. Like you have to hold on to an artifact which we'll get to in a minute for a certain number of turns etc. So you're gonna see in this game, every disc has a special ability. And I think this game doesn't really focus in, as much on your you know, precision, dexterity. It comes in handy and it's gonna help. But a lot of the game has to do with your tactics and strategy, using the abilities on your cards. Now we'll see with my uh, pretend game here if I can remember those, because sometimes when the camera's rolling, I can't remember everything that happens. I forget stuff. The basic premise of this game is simple. When you flick a disc at an opponent's disc, you inflict one damage. Some special abilities allow you to inflict more damage, but we'll get to that in a bit. Fighters, as we see here, they're the smallest character, and they only have one life point. They get hit one time, like this, and they're removed from the game. Veterans, are a bit bigger and they have two life points. So I'll take my veteran, Ezin, and my fighter, Elemental. They have two life points, they get hit once, they flip over to expose their wound side. You can see this little drop here. And if they get hit again, then they're removed from the game. The heroes are the biggest character discs and they're worth five or six life points. And this depends on what's shown on their card. On the left-hand side, you have this little handy heart icon. And in this case, my hero's name is Karu. He's with the Order of Dust, and he's worth six life points. When they take hits, basically you mark hits. So if he gets hit by the elemental, boom. He gets a damage marker placed on his card. When he's got damage markers that equal or exceed the life points, then he's removed from the game. On your turn, you get three actions where for each action, you could flick one of your discs to get a better position. You could flick a disc to hit one of your opponents, or flick a ranged attack missile. To unleash a special ability or use a special power. Boom. So here's a play area with two constructed teams. Your team's made up from a pool of fighters, veterans, and heroes, and you choose from one of the four orders, grass, metal, dust, or fire, or a combination of those orders. 
So you're going to choose those discs that make up your team based on the skills and abilities that you want in your strategy. It's kind of like building or constructing a deck in Magic the Gathering where you're going to find cards that have synergies together. The abilities and powers work well together. Or if you're putting a team together of like a miniature team like Hero Clicks or something like that. The recommended play area. Um, so Hobby World suggests having like a 36 inch by 36 inch square play area as a recommended, but they also say that you can play anywhere. And that's part of the fun of the game where you can create obstacles. Like you see I have here, I have these two little card binders from my Star Wars The Card Game. Um, these two binders here are making up some obstacles. You can hide around them, make ranged attacks around them. So that's part of the fun of the game. And so what I did for my play area is I made it a little bit bigger. It's three foot by four foot. And I used my favorite uh, role playing mat. This is a chess X mat. And I find that the surface of this mat is phenomenal for this game. I think someone should get the idea to market this material and have a really cool picture on it or something like that. I mean, if this ever goes to tournament play, that would be fantastic. So let's get going with our game. We're gonna have orange start first. Normally you could do something like flip a coin and figure out who goes first. So I'm just gonna say orange. So orange has three actions. I have Sholoth, and he's got this special thing called Fire Hit. So when he hits somebody, he actually inflicts one damage. So he'd inflict a damage to Ezen. But he gets to put this thing called a Flame Missile on the player he hits. And I'm going to start with Sholoth to try to do a Fire Hit to one of these big guys in the back. Ezen's or the cart. See if I can get through these dips. And normally you can walk anywhere around the table. I'm a little limited on space here in my game room uh, with the, everything set up around here. So I'm just going to lean over, look a little awkward, but you'll get the idea. So I'm going to use Sholoth and try to hit Ezen here or there. Ugh. So he just moved. I didn't, I you know, kind of flubbed on his hit and that happens. Now I'll tell you, one of the big things of this game is if any disc goes out of the play area, basically outside of my mat, my little D&D &D mat, um, if it goes outside of the play area, you're going to get penalized and you're going to get a minus one action for your next turn. Don't want that to happen. You want to have three actions. So you got to be really gentle in this game. You don't want to over hit and that's, that's an easy thing to do. And I've had the biggest issue with that trying to play this. Gets you to be really careful and aim carefully, cautiously, etc. Um, now if I had like my first action and I went out of bounds, I just subtract an action. But if it's your last action for the turn, then you better take one of these cards to remind you that your next turn that you have one fewer actions. So Sholoth fizzled. So I'm going to try with one of my untouchables to position them near one of these evil guys because if they're adjacent, they'll overheat them and do a damage. Oh. Okay, so I hit this Ezen, he flips over for damage. My untouchable's over here, he didn't go out of bounds. Um, and then Ezen careened into Karu, which doesn't damage him. If an ally hits him, doesn't hurt him. Another cool thing on this game is to try to hit more than one character with your disc, because you can actually damage both of them, which is awesome, it's hard to do. And if I was better at a game like Pool, I'd probably be better at this, but I stink at Pool. So I have one more action for red, and I'm going to use an elemental and just try to take out a div or something. And fizzled. So next turn is the Order of Dust. And Order of Dust, he's got some pretty easy hits here he's going to take. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is, let's see, we'll just use this div and take out the elemental. Boom. The elemental's gone. Now the elemental, he doesn't have any special power when he dies, so he's just out of the game. So Ezen here is going to try to hit Sholoth. And he does a damage. So now Sholoth gets a damage marker on his card. And one more action is Karu is going to try to hit this untouchable. He's not going to hit his power strip here, so he's only going to do one damage. 
and he knocks him out of bounds. So I'm going to take a time card for the order of dust. He's going to get minus one action to remind him next turn. And when a character disc goes out of bounds, he comes back in approximately where he went out of bounds. He's going to be damaged here. So Sholoth is going to hit Ezin, and he hits him gently, which is a great hit in this game. You don't want to be wild. So he damages him, and then he gets one of these um, Scorching Flames on him. So at the end of my turn, Ezin's going to die unless something happens. Now, if something bumped into this Ezin and that knocked that Scorching Flame off of him, he would uh, basically not get damaged by it. So that's a big thing. There's sometimes these missiles, you got to knock them off of other character cards. So that's one. I could hit this with the elemental, but I'm going to let that kill him. So we're just going to take, take this untouchable. And he hits Karu, he's not adjacent. So Karu is going to get one damage on his card. So Karu gets a damage, and now he's got five health left. Sholoth has four health left. Uh, another action, I have one more. And I am going to take an untouchable and send him up here. And he doesn't, doesn't get adjacent. Doesn't hit either. So, so at the end of the turn, this Ezin dies from the Scorching Flame. So he's out of the game. And Black has two actions. So we're going to take a Div, hit Sholoth, and does a damage to Sholoth. So he's got three health remaining. Take this other disc, see if I can hit two character discs at once. Wow. I stink. All right. So I lose an action. The third action of the game is gone. So now it's back to red. And red, again, we'll just take Sholoth and then try to hit Karu. Because if I hit him, I'll put a flame missile on him. Oops. So I knocked some guys out of bounds. And I get another. Red's going to get a time card. Tells us we get one less action. Karu still gets a damage for that. There. And so on and so forth. So I got the two teams here. They're constructed. Each has three fighters, uh, two veterans, and a hero. And I have them arranged a little bit different just because of their abilities on each side. But you're going to see our divs here, the fighters on this team, they have an ability where when they die, they get to go on a card. So every player's got these cards in their camp. So azim has got his card, the div has his. And on the card is a little trait. It's got their health points as a reminder for some of them and to show how much your hero has. And then it's got, um, you know, tells if they're a veteran, a hero, etc. But on these cards, um, basically when Div dies, he's going to get placed on one of the other cards. And then if I hit someone with Ezin here, for instance, he would do an additional damage and then this goes away. My Ezin on this team, I find is really cool because he's like a vampire. So like when he hits somebody, let's see if I can do this here. When he hits somebody, if we're going to say he's damaged. He sucks the life out of them. He would kill his elemental, and then he gets to heal himself. Very cool. Um, then my Karu here. He's got a couple abilities that are really cool as well. He gets this Lariat of Pain. So he's got a little icon for two missiles on his card. And this Lariat of Pain, it's exactly what it says. I can fire this at either an opponent. Boom. If I hit him, this goes on there. It doesn't do a damage, but now Next time this would hit somebody, it would inflict two damage, might kill one of my guys, but it would also explode and do one damage to him, killing the elemental. I could also, I find this combination one of the best in the game, is Karu's ability here. He can shoot a Lariat of Pain missile right here, put it on Essen, and then of course Essen's going to deal two damage now, and then when he takes the damage from the Lariat of Pain, um, he can heal himself, which is fantastic. Uh, the other thing Karu's got is you see this little red line at the bottom. That's a power, kind of like a, a power strike. So if I can flick the disc and actually get my finger to hit that red area, instead of Karu doing one damage, he's going to do two. So this is only one. So let's take 
the hero. So if I flick him, boom. Now Sholoth, this hero, gets two damage tokens on his card. So a couple more things I need to talk about here is how does an artifact work? This game's got these artifact tokens that you don't flick. Here I have the Fire Mine from Red and the Smithy of Dust from Black. Artifacts can be controlled by any color out there. So the orange team here, the Order of Fire, can control the Smithy of Dust, for, it's uh, the Order of Dust's artifact, and likewise the Order of Dust can control the Fire Mine from the Order of Fire. Basically the artifacts have special powers that they'll grant your team. The Fire Mine will keep replenishing your missiles. Ajikara here, I switched our hero from Sholoth to the other hero is Ajikara. He has these three Wandering Tornadoes. And a Wandering Tornado is a ranged attack that inflicts one damage. When you flick it, you can actually flick it twice. You could have it go around a corner, you know, peek out from a corner and then flick it 90 degrees the opposite direction. So the Fire Mine replenishes your missiles. So when he's out of his three missiles, he's done. Unless there's something like the Fire Mine that keeps giving him those missiles back. And so the way you control an artifact here is I could have this elemental hit the Fire Mine very nicely done, which is the first time I've done that. And what happens is as soon as you hit that, if it's not controlled, you put your disc on top of that. And now you get the power from the fire mine. With our fire mine, the order of fire controls that. They're going to control as long as he stays on top of that. I can't use that disc now that he's on top of there. But now if the order of dust wanted to take the fire mine, let's say my div was here, I have to first hit the fire mine out from under the elemental. Now this is unclaimed. And then I would have to hit it again with one of my other characters, like that. He went out of bounds, I get penalized, but Div hit that, and so now he, the Order of Dust would now get that power. So that's artifacts, and then the last thing I'll talk about are rituals. You don't have to play your game with rituals, but they're optional. And rituals are some pretty cool cards. Normally it'd be something like, okay, we're gonna shuffle this deck and everyone gets one ritual that they can use at any time during the game. And it's just basically a extra bonus that you can play when you need it. Like there's one for healing, uh, summoning, where you can summon one of your fighters or another fighter into the battlefield. It's pretty neat. Purification, discard any one missile that's mounted onto a character disc or place it on their card. That's a great one. Uh, teleport, well, you can move one of your discs somewhere else in the battlefield. Get the idea. So those are fun and it's kind of one of those things you don't have to start playing with them, but it's neat to get one of those, like draw it before the game, or you get it for winning sometimes one of the campaigns. You get a, a ritual that you can use in the next battle in that campaign. So really like this game. Luke and I love playing it. Um, it's exciting. Uh, the games last about 10 to 15 minutes. If you have a really big battle, it's like 15 minutes. Uh, so they're really quick. Kind of reminds me of playing a nice uh, game of like Magic the Gathering where I get my butt beat really fast. Um, so hopefully you learn the rules here and uh, it's going to be coming out on Kickstarter. Um, I got a nice review copy from Hobby World I really like. And if you want to get a hold of me, uh, my name's Pete Krause, Modern Table Gamer, and you can get a hold of me at moderntablegamer at gmail.com or leave some comments. I'll check them from time to time on the Dice Tower Network. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>